Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Podcaster Hour. <laughs> My name's Ian Austin Gray. Welcome to the show. This show is all about how you can launch your podcast through the power of Ecom Live. And today, this is episode seven, and it's all about how to produce your podcast for your live shows. I'm going to be showing my full work flow uh, for my live show and how I turn that into a podcast and blog posts. And this is quite exciting because there's we're getting towards the end of it now. So this is, we're going to have 10 shows in the podcast hour. And we are, let me just put the dates up on, on here. So um, yeah, so today, February the 8th, how to produce your podcast from your live shows, full workflow. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how you can repurpose your live shows, not just the podcasting part, but how you can turn it into blog posts and all that kind of stuff. The following week, I've got the wonderful Mark Asquith on to talk about podcast hosting in particular and the promotion side of things. I mean, Mark Asquith is the darling of the podcasting world. He knows so much about it. He's also the founder of Captivate FM, which is an amazing podcasting host that I use. And then finally, on March the 1st, We've got podcasting Q&A, putting it all together um, in, a, in a bumper episode at the end, just for you to uh, ask me questions and we can have a, a, bit of a bit of a chat. Awesome. Right. Well, this is the live part of the show before we get on to the, uh, the main part, but I can just, I want to kind of bring in some amazing comments from you guys. So we've got Tim Sorn watching, saying, tuning in from across the pond. Always amazing to see you, Tim. Hope you're doing really well. We've got the fabulous Carmen Sanchez watching from GM Orlando, Florida. And we've got Stephen Webb watching from UK, the UK in, in Cornwall. Now, hopefully, we're going to be going to the Cornwall later this year for a little break. But We'll see about that, but beautiful part of the world. And we've got Neil Hickson watching from Ohmskirk in the UK. Awesome. Great to see you, Neil. Uh, we've got, uh, who else have we got? We've got Rob. Uh, we're saying good morning. Um, <laughs> digging, uh, let's see if I can read this. Digging Richmond says, love the countdown timer. Who doesn't love a countdown timer? I think it creates a bit of exciting tension and stuff like that. And I have to admit, I'm not a Laurie Petrucci, but I was dancing there. Uh, Odie, Odie Miller's here. Fabulous to see Odie. Hope you're doing really well. Uh, from, watching from the beautiful San Diego. Oh, how I miss San Diego. And um, yeah, same bet was saying uh, is from which, uh, if I can say it, Wichita. Um, yeah, that's the autocorrect side of things. Arnold watching from the beautiful Netherlands. We've got Melissa Noel watching. Congratulations, by the way, on getting the third prize in my giveaway. That happened uh, just last week. And we've got Aaron saying MP4 into Orphonic works pretty darn well for me if I don't record directly to my mixer SD card. So we're going to be talking about loads of different ways today to uh, produce your show. Um, these are This is what I do, but obviously um, for you, it's going to be different. And I've not tried, or, 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 if I can pronounce it, Orphonic. I've had lots of really good things about it, but thank you, um, Aaron. That's awesome. Uh, Michelle saying, hey, fam. We've also got the Night Sky Guy watching from Montreal in Canada. Uh, Mark watching from Devon, Alberta. Oh my goodness, there's so many awesome people here. And I, unfortunately, I can't get through everyone. We've got uh, Rob, Gary, uh, Quinzone Studios, um, Al Jennings from Indiana. Uh, awesome to see you all here. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. So what I want to say to you is, um, if you have any questions or any thoughts, anything, and this is not all about me, this is, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the subject. But if you've got any thoughts on how you produce your podcast and live show, I'd love to hear from you. But if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments, put a capital Q followed by a colon. I think that's the right word for the punctuation there. I think I mean, that's certainly what we say in the UK. Um, so book Q colon and then the question. And then I'll do my best to answer that question. We're going to break this up into three sections today, going through the, the whole the whole stages through um, from the beginning to the end. So I think I think that's it. I think that's it. I think it's time to get on the show because I've got so much to share with you today. So uh, just so that we get ready for the for the replay part and for the main section, I'm just going to go back to the image um, and then I'll introduce the show. All right, I'll see you in a sec.
Hello, my name's Ian Anson Gray, and in this episode of the Podcaster Hour, I'm talking about how to produce your podcast from your live shows, a complete overview and how you can use Ecom Live with that. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Welcome to the Podcaster Hour from Ecamm, helping entrepreneurs, business owners, and live streamers launch a podcast with success using the power of Ecamm Live. Grow your audience and expand your reach and learn how to plan, promote, produce, and repurpose your live show and podcast. Here's your host, Ian Anderson Gray. Hello and welcome to the Podcaster Hour. This is episode seven. I can't believe episode seven. This is the show that helps you launch your podcast through the power of Ecamm Live. We go live every single Monday at 4 p.m. in the UK. That's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. And in today's show, uh, this is episode seven, we're going to be talking about how to produce your podcast for your live shows using Ecom Live, a full workflow. Um, just to let you know for uh, future episodes, we're going up to episode 10. Here are the next episodes that we've got. So today, all about producing your podcast from your live shows. Next week is all about killer repurposing techniques for your live shows. So repurposing um, is you know, one, one idea of doing that is to repurpose your live shows into podcasting, which is what this show is all about. But there are other ways you can do it. You can turn it into blog posts. All of these episodes are being turned into blog posts um, on the Ecamm website, on the Ecamm blog. But loads of other ways we can do that too. And then the week after that, I've got the fabulous Mark Asquith, the darling of the podcasting world, is going to be coming on the show, going to be asking him questions, uh, talking about podcast hosts and promotion. Who wants to promote their podcast? Put a yes in the comments if you want to promote your podcast. Everyone does. And then finally, on March the 1st, it's all about uh, questions and answers, podcasting Q&A on March the 1st. So that's awesome. Just to let you know, this show is powered by Ecom Live. It is my favorite live video tool for Mac. It, it, I wouldn't be without it. it. It helps me produce my podcast so easily. And I'm going to be talking about that in today's show. The way you can separate, you can record on separate tracks, your audio, your sound effects, your videos, and your guests all on different tracks. And that is amazing. Okay, let's have a look at some live viewers here. We've got uh, we've got Preben watching, how's it saying? Hi from Danish snowstorm. It was snowing a little bit here in the UK. Um, but yeah, hope it, hope you're all right there. <laughs> We've got uh, Evangelismo watching from Madrid in Spain. Doc Rock is here. Great to see you, Doc. I learned so much from you. Thank you so much for all that you give to the Ecamm Live community. Um, and <laughs> Michelle saying, Ecamm Network watching quietly from work. Quietly, yes, well... I'm very impressed. Uh, and Joshua says, looking forward to today's episode. Very timely, planning to use audio for my StreamYard interviews for a podcast. Awesome. Well, I hope that what you learned today is going to help you with that. Um, and Aaron is was talking just before I started, was talking about using the tool Orphonic. Um, and this is a tool that I, that processes your audio, makes it sound really, really cool. I'm not going to be using that in today's show, but there are loads and loads of techniques you can use. You can use Orphonic. There's also Alitu, which I mentioned a few weeks ago. I had Colin Gray, who's the founder of Alitu on the show, um, talking about that. In today's show, I'm going to be showing you how to use Adobe Audition, but yeah, we could use lots of different tools there. Um, awesome. Right. I think I think it's good. Yeah. It's just Stephen says it's really cold in Cornwall. It's cold everywhere. So yeah, I hope you're, you've got your thermals on. Awesome. Right. So let's talk about um, the first stage. So the first thing that you need to think about is planning your process. I would not be without my process. For It helps me at all the different stages because I don't know about you, there are so many moving parts in producing a live show. But when you add podcasting to the mix, it's even more You've got to think about the processing, the, the planning, all those kind of things. And I, I've talked about this before, but I have what I call the five P's formula, uh, which is all the stages that you need to think about for your live show. So that is um, the, the first P is planning. The second is um, pre-promotion. The third is the production of your live show. Then it's the post-promotion. And then finally, it's your repurposing. 
But when you add um, podcasting to the mix, it's even more stuff that you need to think about. So that's that's I'm going to share with you some of my process. I use Asana as my project management tool. You don't have to use that. You could just use a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet or whatever you like. There are loads of cool tools out there, but that's what I do. Then if you've got a guest on your show, I think you need to have a really good uh, booking system for your guests. This is whether you have it's uh, for a podcast or a live show, really important. Um, then have a checklist for your guest um, because if if people are used to coming on a, a podcast, they might not be used to coming on a live show. And your your show is going to be both, both a podcast and a live show. And I think you need to give them some thoughts and tools on how to present themselves and on what to do. And for, for example, you know, should they use a computer? Should they use a particular microphone? That kind of thing. Then um, creating a planning doc and a run of show and then scheduling your broadcast. So that's the bit that, that that's what we're going to be talking about in this section. So let's talk about that first one, which is uh, about that planning process, um, which I think is so, so important. And if you go back to one of my previous episodes right at the start, I was talking about how to create a planning document for your whole show. I'm not going to be talking about that today, but I'm going to be sharing with you my process, how I use um, how I created my plan using, uh, well, I use Asana, but you don't have to use that. So let me just um, share my screen. I've got too many windows open here. How many tabs do people have open here? <laughs> What's your record for how many uh, how many tabs you have open? My goodness. I've only got about, oh, I've got about 12. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, so let's open up Google Chrome. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I've got two templates in my Asana. I've got my guest show template and I've also got my solo show one because there are different stages if if I'm just if I'm doing a solo show I don't need to obviously send out links to my guests and things like that so they're very very similar uh, but this is my template in Asana this is what I do so let's just scroll to the top here um, and I have I have a team but you don't have to have a team for this so I've got um, you know I've grown my business over the years I started just as with myself um, but if you do have an assistant if you have uh, other people that you can help you like a podcast editor as well you can pop them into Asana and uh, give them different tasks which is really really good so I've got some thoughts there on how I want to improve this in the future things like promoting my Twitter lists and timing and things like that um, but I've broken this uh, up into different sections Sections. I've got my planning section, my pre-promotion, production. Let's just load some more subtasks there. I've got post-promotion. So the production is obviously is actually going live and recording the podcast. The post-promotion side of things, that should probably say post-promotion and podcast production uh, because there's uh, elements of that that I need to talk about. Uh, then we've got repurposing, which I'm going to be talking a bit more about next week. So um, Asana works really, really well for me, but uh, I can see that DocWalk says I just started uh, Asana for LGL, it's great. And um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, we've got LBC uh, Branding who uses Trello. Trello is also a really good tool. It kind of depends, I think, on how your brain works. The main reason why I use Asana is because my assistant forced me to, and but I'm actually really happy about that. <laughs> Um, Doc says, uh, Doc Rock says, I already say 12, but then I remember there are three browsers and a few tabs on each. <laughs> oh, Crinzone Studios, 50 tabs. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, and, uh, I, okay, Michael Greth says, I use OneNote. OneNote's a great tool. I haven't used it. Um, but I know a lot of people that do say a lot of good things about OneNote. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so let's let so that that's what I've done. That's what I've done here. So the the first thing that I do is I send a, I send a link to my guests. So um, let's just go through those initial stages. So create your process. It's going to be different to mine. Mine's actually quite complicated and lengthy, and I built that up over time. But the first thing that you'll want to do is get your guest to book a time with you. Now, I use Calendly for that. I know quite a few people use Calendly. Um, I love Calendly. It's a really quick and easy way. Um, so here's my Calendly here. I've, I've created one for the Confident Live Marketing Show. You can book that time with me. So um, so if you're a guest, for example, let's say you could want to book there at, um, at 3.45 p.m., you can confirm that. So here I've got, um, you know, you enter your name in there, your email, um, I've asked them to put their headshot image in there, just a link in there, a short bio. To keep it easy for me, I want them to enter it under 280 characters because I want to be able to just to announce 
to read that out on air and I want it to be nice, short and sweet and in third person. Uh, so I can help promote them. I ask for their website, their Twitter username, Instagram, YouTube, if they've got them, LinkedIn, that kind of stuff. Um, we've probably talked about what we're going to talk about on the show, but sometimes I, I like to ask them uh, if they've got any thoughts and ideas, to kind of flesh this out. And I've had some guests on my show that have actually gone, almost given me mini blog posts here, which has been amazing in helping me structure what we're going to be talking about on the show. Um I ask a question, a silly question. I, I quite like asking silly questions. So I ask, you know, what's your favorite style of music? That's primarily because I actually sing a little song for my guests. Uh, it's just the way I am. I did train as a singer. And I've uh, because I've got the pro version of Cat and Blee, uh, there's the, also the ability to then send them a text reminder there. So I hope that all go, you can all see that on the screen there. Um, but yeah, that's how I use Calendly. It's really, really good. Um, so yeah, Melissa asks, what type of form are you using? So this is Calendly.com. And then I create, uh, there's the ability to create a custom form in there just to add some extra fields. So I've add, added fields like, um, you know, what what is their Twitter handle and their Instagram thing. Uh, and then I just put all of those in to uh, a spreadsheet on Google. So let me see if I can find that for you. Um, Calendly is great. Uh, and yeah, Neil Hickson says, good old Google Sheets, Google Calendar for planning, link everything together. Keep it simple. Yeah, I, I personally really like Calendly because it brings it all together. Uh, and Mark also says, great tip here, you can use Google Forms for free. And the advantage with using Google Forms is that will links directly to your Google Sheet if you're going to do it that way. The reason I, I prefer Calendly is because it links with my uh, with my calendar, and I can I can say I only want you to book these times. So I've only got Tuesdays and Thursdays at these specific times, and sometimes I've already got a guest booked. So it just makes it makes it easier for me. But if you want to use Google Forms, uh, really really good uh, way of doing that. So once I've done that. This is my form uh, for this show. Um, so hopefully you can see that okay. So uh, I haven't, I've got some guests here. So you can see uh, the first two were solo. Then it was, I had Colin Gray on. Uh, then so a couple of solos, Mike Russell last week, a couple of solos. I've got the date. Um, I actually haven't in this show because it's not so relevant put in their email, headshot, bio and things like that. But on my other, my Confident Line Marketing show, I make sure that I have got their headshots, I've got their bio in there, and I've got it all listed there, just so it makes everything so much easier for the, the future. So definitely, I, I would I would use Google Sheets. Um, works really, really well, I think. And uh, yeah, Doc Rock says Calendly is the bomb, very helpful. But there are some free tools out there as well. You don't have to use Calendly, not forcing you, like my assistant forced me to use Asana, which I'm actually, I'm really happy with. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so where are we with things? We've done process planning, booking your guests. Oh yes, the next thing is send them um, send them a guest checklist. So you'll want to create your own for this. Uh, I'll show you what I've come up with here. Let me just see if I've got it. Where's it gone? There we go. Um, okay, hopefully you can see this. Okay, so this is my checklist here. Uh, I make it really super simple at the start. I say, we will be broadcasting uh, the interview live with video, and part of this will be used for an audio podcast recording. I think you need to spell it out because um, some people won't know. Some guests might get mixed up. Is this a podcast? Is this a live show? And you need to spell it out that it's both. And then I link to uh, my podcast page so it shows all the videos and podcasts from previous things. And then I say, what, do you, what should you have? These are the must-haves for your guests. So first of all, a computer. Yes, technically, uh, with interview mode, you can come in using a phone or a tablet. But it's just a much better experience, I think, if they can use a tablet, sorry, to use a computer, the quality is significantly better. I recommend that they use Google Chrome or Firefox. I know Safari works. I know other ones do, but I just... I like to, to keep things simple. Make sure they've got a webcam, um, ideally an external mic, that they use headphones. Oh my goodness. Okay, I want to know from you watching live, um, do you like to wear headphones or, or earbuds or something like that? And do you want your guests to do that? For me, I want my guests to wear earbuds or something because Ecamm Live has got amazing echo cancellation and things like that. But even still, I think um, there's... Can, potentially be echoes and, and beeps and things like that coming in the background and it just makes it so much easier for you if your guests has 
is wearing headphones or earbuds or something like that, please, 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 please do that. Um, uh, <laughs> a live streaming master says it's a must, no options. I, I, I assume you're talking about the headphone thing. I'd love to hear from you because I feel so passionately about this and it's just like, ah, but I do get it. You know, some people don't like wearing headphones or earbuds because, you know, it might messes up the hair and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, um, Doc Rock agrees with me. I knew you would, Doc. Um, I'm an old radio guy. You always wear headphones, earbuds. Um, and Carlos agrees, not an option, headphones. I kind of, I'm going to guess that actually most people watching today will agree with me. Um, but not everyone does. Then the next thing I, th I always recommend, get them to do a speed test. Most of them don't do this, but just check your speed, make sure it's all okay. Check how you look, all that kind of stuff. And then I have uh, loads of other stuff here, uh, super SWAT stuff that goes into more de detail. I won't go through all of this stuff, but basically this is a little bit more about um, what, you know, other stuff that they can do like lighting and, and webcams and, and noise and all this kind of stuff just uh, to, to help them a bit more about that. And then on the final page, a little bit more about the show, uh, what they can expect and the audience and all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of guessing that most of my guests on my show aren't going to read that far, but I'm giving them the option. If they want to get special points from me, then they'll read that far and, and they'll make it um, make it really good for me. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing at the comments here. Um, yeah, why anyone won't is beyond me. <laughs> stuff your hair that's the polite way of saying that headphones are a must L lbc branding says and um who have we got here uh, uh social builder says i got headphones on awesome awesome they don't have to be big ones like these by the way but i, I do like these um these these are nice kind of uh, these are technically noise cancellation headphones these are the bose um what are they, what are they called quiet comfort 35s i think they are um but I haven't got the I haven't got the noise cancellation on because that's yeah you can't hear anything if you do that. Um, okay, cool. So that's the next thing that you do. You send them the uh, you send them a checklist. Then it's time to start planning your show for this particular episode. And I talked about this last week, uh, not last week, the week before. Um, I'm not going to go go through this all again about uh, creating a run uh, the best run of show for your for your shows. But um, I'll, I will show, share with you. Um, today's uh, one. So let me just find it in my infinite number of tabs that I've got. Uh, okay, go go back to here. So this is this is my run of show for today's show. I've got this as a Google Doc. I first of all, I've got the this is the blurb or the description for our social media posts here. So I've written that out here, and then I take some of that description and then plant that into my run of show. So I've got the pre-show slot. So if you're watching the replay you won't be seeing this. This is just the live element um, of my show that I like to do. So I, I like to structure my show in a way that has a bit of a live element, um, but that's not quite so helpful if you're watching the replay. It's a bit more informal. Um, then I have the the hook um, the and the playing the intro video, some housekeeping stuff, uh, and then I split the show into sections. So at the moment we're in section one. I'm going through my different... Um, uh, different sections that I want to talk about, my different points, then a reminder, um, live questions, then I go into uh, the next point and break it up like that and then end with um, w when I'm next going to go live and then my uh, my tagline at the end. So I, once, you've, once you've got your guest in, you can then start to plan your show. Uh, and I definitely recommend doing that using a Google Doc. Uh, I also use um, a teleprompter. So I put my run of show there. So I've got my little... Uh, remote control thing here and it means that I know exactly what I'm talking about. I also print it out as well so I always recommend just in case my teleprompter decides to die a death. Uh, I've actually done been really bad and it's still in the printer over there but if 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 that was to happen I could go over and get it. Um, so that's that's the next thing. Okay then we're on to scheduling or if you're from the UK scheduling your live show and so you can do this within Ecom Live really easily or if you're using Restream uh, you can create it within Restream, and then that will then appear in Ecom Live. Whatever you're doing, but uh, that's that's uh, what you need to do. There, it works really, really well. Uh, you schedule your live show, and if it's um, on Facebook, you can schedule it up to a week in advance. For YouTube, it's it's either a year or it's it's a long time in the future. So, uh, but certainly, I would I would recommend doing it a week in advance, and then that helps you then start to promote your. 
uh, live shows as well. And then obviously you would then want to let your guest know that you have scheduled it, give them the link and ask them to promote it, um, make it as easy for them as possible. Really, really important stuff. Awesome. Well, if you've just joined us, this is the Podcaster Hour from Ecamm. And in today's show, it's all about how to produce your podcast from your live shows using Ecamm Live. I'm giving a full workflow of how I do it. Um, and now I just want to just to check how, um, uh, check the comments, see if we've got any questions here. We were talking about uh, the necessity of using headphones before, and I think that is really, really important. Um, we've got Aaron who says, uh, if you don't like big headphones like these and prefer earbuds through a mixture, uh, they make quarter inch adapters. Yeah, really good point. So you, you don't have to wear big ones. You can, I do actually have some smaller ones um, down on the floor. They shouldn't be on the floor, should they? But anyway, um, some really kind of nice little tiny ones and they, they work well. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Aaron says mixer, not mixer. Yeah, no, I, I knew what he meant. Um, uh, what else have we got? So uh, Dawn says, had so many problems with an, a, a Facebook event post and Ecamm yesterday. Sorry to hear that, Dawn. Let me know a little bit more about um, what the issue is, what, what issues you had. Um, and Dawn says, do you share your templates? Well, all of these, that's a great question. So all of these uh, shows are going to be repurposed into blog posts. Um just taking it, we're, I don't know how uh, in advance we're doing them. Maybe uh, this will be ready in about two or three weeks. I've also got, uh, later this month, I've got my Launch Your Live course, which is uh, all about how to launch your live show, but also turning it into a podcast. And I'm going to be sharing all my detailed templates in, in, in that course. So if you're really interested in the full-blown templates, then uh, join that course. That's later this month. But uh, in that blog post that uh, Katie from Ecamm is creating, will give, give you lots and lots of information there. So you, no worries about that. LBC Branding just got my teleprompter recently. Game changer. I totally agree. I, I mean, I have to say, I wasn't so sure about getting a teleprompter. Um, but when you have it, having your having your, your show notes in front of you makes such a difference. It really, really does. Don't put a script up there, but just put bullet points. Uh, really makes a massive, massive um, difference. Uh, Drew Allen says, would you be able to share the document that you were just showing us? So I uh, said um, in the, blo the blog post, we'll be going through loads of information. You'll have pretty much everything that you need there. Um, I'm going to be showing the full templates in, the, in my course later this month. But don't worry, uh, you'll have loads and loads of information to get started here. And if you've got any specific questions, please, please let me know. Um, yeah, uh, the quest, uh, so Drew Allen says, developing a podcast for my company and the doc you were showing would be really helpful. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more than happy to help you with that, Drew. Um, Dawn said, Facebook Live through the event and camera and sound working. Uh, not quite sure what you mean by there. Um, and Drew Allen says, where can we find the blog post? Just on the Ecamm website. So probably the easiest place to go to is iag.me forward slash Ecamm live. That takes you to the Ecamm website and then just click on blog and you'll see it all there. You'll you'll see one of the recent podcast hour blog posts on there. So <laughs> uh, Doc Rock says, teleprompter is tempting me now. I'm with IAG. Uh, was worried about being robotic, but hmm. Yeah, you don't. So I, I think it kind of depends on the show that you do. Uh, for this type of show where I've, I, I'm a lot more structured and I think you need to be fairly structured for a podcast. I think having a run of show and having the, uh, the a template in front of you, a run of show on a, on, a, on a teleprompter makes a lot of sense. It's really helped me. But hopefully, hopefully you don't think I'm sounding robotic. I mean, I'm not. I'm just, have, I've got reminders in front of me of what I'm going to talk about. So at the moment, it says live questions. So I'm just know that I, uh, it's a reminder that I need to, to look at um, the questions in front of me and stuff like that. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, now this is a great question. Thank you, Mel, for this. I noticed you are answering questions here. When you repurpose for podcasts, do you edit these out? And it, so it depends. So this show that I'm doing at the moment, we're not turning this into a podcast. Maybe we should have done, but, uh, you know, this is something to think about for the future. But, um, for, for my live show, I, I, I probably wouldn't answer so many questions. I maybe would do two or three in each section, but I absolutely do keep them in. As long as I make those relevant for my replay viewers and for the podcast listeners. 
So I think you, that's why it's important to structure it. So the way I've structured today's show is I've um, I've got section one where I'm sharing uh, about how you you plan your show. Then I'm, then I'm on questions at the moment. Then I'm going to share something else. Then it's questions. Share something else. Questions. And if you structure it well like that, it works. It works really really well. Um, but if it was all over the place and you go on to loads of tangents, that's not going to work quite so well for podcast, in my opinion. So, um, uh, so I hope that helps. I hope that helps, Mel. But great question. Uh, Quinn's Own Studio says, "What uh, teleprompter are you using?" I think I've seen some for around hundred pounds. Yeah, I, th- mine cost about hundred pounds, so about hundred dollars ish. Um, it's an iPad teleprompter. Now, I know it's not the most perfect solution, but I happen to have a, an old iPad version 3, an iPad third generation around, and so I just put it on there. I've got, uh, and it, it basically just reflects in front of my camera, works really well. It's not perfect, but, you know, for 100 quid, $100, it's more than perfect for what I need. So just go on Amazon or, or other stores and look for an iPad teleprompter. There are off much more expensive ones out there and if you've got the budget for that then by all means go for that but that's um what i i do <laughs> and don't worry says no you're fine perfect specimen of british um british mull with dry humor um yes well there we go uh thank you for that oh there we go you 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 uh you said it again you just uh, miss yeah british male with dry humor well there we go yeah i do try i do i do try that's my my posh british accent of course we all speak like this in the uk um okay let's go on to the next topic the next bit so we we've, we've gone through all of that so the next page and by the way this is really cool this is a lot i love this part of ecamm is that you can just put a pdf up here so i've got a pdf with three pages this is page two I created this in Canva, or you could produce this in Easel. So now we're onto the promotion and then the production side of things. So uh, loads of things that you can do here. Uh, first of all, uh, what you've scheduled your live event, so you could create, for example, a Facebook event, and uh, and then the great thing about that is you can then invite your fans and your friends to watch your live show. That works really, really well. You, there are Facebook Messenger bots. Haven't got time to go into all of that. There's, uh, you could then schedule in advance using a social media management tool, whatever that is. I happen to use Agora Pulse. I love Agora Pulse. Big shout out to them. Um, but make sure that you're scheduling to let people know that you're going to be going live. You can also set that up afterwards. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit um, for the podcast as well. Uh I use AdEvent. AdEvent is a great way for your audience to be able to subscribe to a calendar so they'll know when your live shows are coming out and when your podcasts are coming out. And don't forget your email uh, list as well. So send emails out. There's a great uh, tool called SendTrick, S-E-N-D-T-R-I-C.com, which allows you to embed countdown timers in your emails. And that's great for live. So that's not so much... Uh, to do with podcasting, but if you obviously want to create uh, a bit of a buzz for your live shows because it just makes them, it just allows you to grow your community as well and to have more of a community feel to that. Uh, cool. So, um, yeah, LBC Branding says they use uh, SmarterQ. Great, great tool. I uh, like SmarterQ. I was last, was it last year? Yeah, last year I went whale watching with uh, the CEO of SmarterQ. He's a great guy. Uh, It lives in Canada. And David Smith says, cannot say enough uh, good about Ecamm Life. I'm glad you said good. It has allowed us to focus on content instead of tech. Oh my goodness. So, so true there. Um, So, so true. Um, Cool, 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 cool. Um, So, uh, so that's the promotion, the pre-promotion side of things. Now, it's time to set up Ecamm Live. Now, I'm not going to go into everything that you need to do to set up Ecamm Live. There are plenty of tutorials out there that will help you with that. Um, but, you know, you need to be able to create all your different scenes for your show. So if you've got a guest, you'll want to have a scene with just you on it. Uh, if you have a guest, so I haven't got a guest on, but if I change my scene, if I had a guest on, I would be able to bring them in there on the right uh, I've also got a uh, guest screen there if they were sharing their screen. I've got my uh, screen share there. I've got loads of different ones there as well. And, and also guest image. That was when Ma- um, when Mike Russell was on the show. So I've, you set up all of those ahead of time. Uh, you, uh, But the important thing is that for podcasting, you set up the ISO 
audio tracks. So let me just um, share, uh, go into live demo mode. Uh, okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. And then if you do uh, command and comma, or if you just click on the cog there, whatever, it doesn't really matter, uh, you go into the Ecamm preferences. And so for audio, there's a number of things you might want to think about. Uh, for If you click on the audio section here at the top, um, right at the bottom, now I've got this grayed out because I'm currently going live. I can't change these settings one, when I'm live. This allows me to check record isolated audio tracks. And if you're wanting to uh, do this as a podcast, then I think you want to separate your track from your guest track and do it that way. So you've, you're separated out and it also will separate things like sound effects. So if I have like a cheering sound like this, then this is going to be recorded on a separate track. So if I decide later on, I actually don't want that cheering sound. It sounds a bit too cheesy. I can then just easily remove that. So that's that's really important. Uh, loads of other things you could you can think about doing as well. There's, there's for example, there's uh, you can switch on high quality audio mode, which I do. It just records at a higher audio bit rate. You don't need that necessarily, but I just like to have the best quality as as, as much as I can. Um, so there we go. Uh, live demo mode off. Um, so that's what you need to do, but you need to remember to do that before you start going live. Um, so just check uh, that you're, you, you know where you're going live, that you're going live to either Facebook or, or wherever you're going. Test your audio and your video. Oh, yes. And of course, the other thing is, um, let me just see. I can never remember where this is. One second. Yeah. Let me just go to live demo mode again. Uh, because this is something I think is quite cool. You can choose your recordings folder. So this is where your um, where where Ecamm will save those recordings for later. I get that to to save it within my Dropbox folder. If you use Google Drive or you're using iCloud, whatever. But I think it's good to have it in a folder where you can share it out later on. So I share this with my assistant and also with my podcast editor. I used to edit my podcasts myself. Now I get uh, a podcast editing company to do that. Um, so I would go there, save your podcast, your sorry, your Ecamm live video recordings and audio recordings in a shareable folder for later. I think that makes a lot, lot of sense to do it that way. Um, so yeah, that's that's that setting up Ecamm Live. Uh, meet your guest early, so that's important. I would say meet them 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes early. Do some testing, make sure that everything's going okay, uh, uh, and then it's time to go live. Um, and I've I've shared this before, but this is just to go over the the structure side of things. So what I like to do is I start with a countdown, and then have a little live element, a bit of an informal pre-show part of this. Uh, and that's just to interact with my live audience. This will not be part of the actual podcast. Then I'll play the show intro, uh, which you will have seen at the beginning. And then at that point, it's the replay and podcast section. This is the bit that only the, the replay viewers and the podcast listeners will listen to or see. Then I'll do, I'll end the show with my, my, with my outro. And then you've got the choice. You either end it there or you could have an optional live element at the end that you wouldn't necessarily go into the, the podcast part of things. So you do the live show and, and then you obviously you then press end broadcast and all of those uh, tracks will be saved within your Ecamm Live recordings folder, which is awesome. A few other things you could think about doing. Uh, you could update the descriptions from where you've gone live just to make them more um, like, like they're more catering towards your replay audience. And another thing that's really, I think, important to do is to go back on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, if you're broadcasting to those places, and trim those videos. So you're cutting that beginning bit off. So you're only getting that replay part, the main section of your live show. Add to series on Facebook and YouTube as well, and playlists and all that kind of stuff. Works really, really well. Okay, so in the next section, I'm going to be talking about how to actually edit your podcast and some of the, the post-promotion side of things as well. But if you've just joined us, this is the Podcast Hour from Ecamm, and I'm talking about how to produce your podcast for your live shows using the power of Ecamm Live. So I'm wondering if you've got any questions uh, for me. I'm just going to spend the next, uh, the next few minutes on that. 
Uh, so a Doc Rock says Luna eats a lot, a lot of resources. So beware of that. I'll definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, add event, Stephen Webb. So I think Stephen, yeah, you found it. It's add add event dot com. Uh, and all of these will be, by the way, in the blog post um, later on. So you'll be able to get all of these as well. Um, uh, Doc Rock says we have lots of humpback whales here in winter. So majestic the way they breach, jump out of the water is, oh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I so I went, uh, was at Social Media Marketing World last year and uh, went out on a, on a boat uh, off out of San Diego and it was just gorgeous. I think we saw one whale. Uh, what we didn't, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> Scott Allison says, rub it in, Doc. Yeah, 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 it's all right. But, you know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm happy here in the UK. Uh, yeah, although I'd like to, I would like to travel again. And uh, Scott says, we only see dolphins in my neck of the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, it's, it's a hard life, Scott. <laughs> that sounds, uh, oh, I'd love to see dolphins. They're, go- they're beautiful. Um Pilotsite.tv, how to upload to YouTube an edited version without losing the caveat. Um, so yeah, you can, I mean, you, you've got the option if you want to just edit it afterwards and then upload it. But I like to broadcast it to YouTube live and then I'll just edit it. I'll just trim it off the beginning. I mean, I'm just all for making it as quick and as simple as possible. So that's, that's what I do. But you can absolutely, you can just go live to say Facebook uh, and then download it from, well, you don't need to download it because Ecamm will have recorded it. So you can then just edit it that way. Loads of tools. There's a great one called Descript.com where you can put that, you can just da- um, drag the video into Descript.com and then you can edit it, edit the video, edit the audio. You can cut bits out. You can edit words. Uh, you can remove filler words like um and oh and things like that. Uh, Descript is is a great tool. I'm not going to be talking about that uh, in today's show, but Descript.com works really, really well. Um, oh my goodness, Melissa says, been bitten by a dolphin in, Flo- in Florida on holiday. That sounds horrendous. Oh my goodness. Ah. Oh. It doesn't sound good at all. Right. Okay. So let's let's get on with the the next part. Um, I'm starting to feel all oh, as if a, a dolphin's going to come out and bite me now. Um, so the next bit is to talk about editing the audio for the podcast. And so for this, what I want to do is uh, let me just see if I've got the audio here. Um, so I'm going to go into. Uh, I, I think I'll go into live demo mode actually. Let me just do this uh, live demo mode. Hopefully, can you see this? If I do this, hopefully you can. So what I've opened here, if, if you can't see it, is um, a finder window with, uh, so these are all my, these are all my uh, Ecamm live recordings, whether it's I'm recording it, uh, I've gone live by the way to, for, from Ecamm or I've gone live to Restream. All of them are here. Um, and hopefully you can see, uh, so if you could let me know in the chat, if you can see this, um, I've got number one main mic, uh, so that's my main microphone. Number two is movie audio. Number seven sound effects, and number nine a uh, guest one. So that this was last week's show when I had Mike Russell on the show. So I've got four separate audio tracks, and then I've got a video track um, for for the whole thing. So, um, so yeah, uh, it works really, really well. So what I'm going to, what I'd done earlier, so I prepared this earlier actually, and, uh, yeah, great. People can see that's, that's good. Um, so yeah, let's go to this bit. Oh, I can see the doc rock says dolphins are more dangerous than sharks, honestly, but we have, um, cuted them. So tourists can get hurt. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Michael Kinley, Kinney says, is your guest audio coming directly into Ecamm Live or are you passing through uh, the Rodecaster Pro? Well, I've only just got the, um, let me just go back to here. Uh, I've only just got the uh, Podcaster Pro, the Rodecaster Pro, sorry, the, if I can speak properly, the Rodecaster, Rodecaster Pro. I only got that uh, last week. So I've not been used, you don't need the Rodecaster Pro. It's a great, it's a great uh, piece of kit. Don't get me wrong. But actually, you can just use Ecamm Live to do all this stuff because it will be on separate tracks. So in answer to your question, your guest audio will be recorded on a, in a separate file uh, from Ecamm. So you don't need any extra special kit. It's great if you've got it. I'm not knocking it. 
But that's the great thing about Ecom Live. It's so, so awesome. So I hope that helps, Michael. Uh, it works really well. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Is this going to work? So this is Adobe Audition. What I've done here, now this might look a little bit scary to you. And if it looks really scary, um, don't worry. It's not as scary as it looks. So a number of things. First of all, um, what you can do, um, you can you can learn how to do this yourself, whether it's using Audacity, which is a free tool, or whether you're using a tool like Adobe Audition. I wanted to learn how to use Adobe Audition. Or you could use Ala2, a system like that. But all I've done here is I've dragged... Uh, my audio. So do you remember that what that file, mic one, that is the top uh, uh, track there. Track number two is Mike's, Mike Russell's audio. Uh, track number three there, it says David, but actually that's not David. That is my, um, let's just go back to Adobe Audition so I can see what I'm doing. That is um, the video uh, audio. And then that final one is sound effects. So I need to just change that. Um, so I can then just go through this. You won't be able to hear this. I don't think you can. If I do that, no, uh, because I haven't got the audio routed through, but it doesn't matter. Um, so what I can do now is I can, for example, I can just edit little bits out. So I know this little bit here. Um, let me, if I just play this. Yeah, so that bit is the, the video bit. Um, down here, I think this is probably... Yeah, that, that sound there is the cheering sound. So I might not necessarily want that. So I can then just delete that from, um, from that. Um, now, here, if we look at here, let's just look into this audio here. If I just click on 9, I can now have a look at this audio. And I can see Mike's audio is amazing. But I can see there's quite a few little bits here. Uh, uh, little background noises here. So now you won't be able to hear those, but that's going to be annoying on the podcast. So what I can do, you can, we can do some uh, effects here. So if I go to effects, I go to amplitude and compression. What I can do here is I can, um, it's a good idea to normalize things, but what we can do is we can go to the dynamics tab. Um, so first of all, what I'll do is I'm going to just select this little bit here. Uh, and then I'm going to go to Amplitude st Statistics and then scan that selection. So what I want to do here is I want to find out the uh, the average amplitude, the average volume for this. And by the way, if this seems really complicated, you don't need to worry about this. What you can do is you can uh, go and get this edited using another tool or get a podcast editor to do this. But I can see here that the average amplitude is about 29 decibels. So... Um, let's go to amplitude and compression. Let's go to dynamics. Uh, and then what I can do is I, I tend to go a little bit higher than this. So I've got the auto gate at minus 35. So I want that to be, um, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm going uh, lower than the actual sound. There. And what the auto gate does is it will remove, it will remove any sounds that are under minus 35 decibels. So I've got that. I've got the compressor. I want the compressor there to just compress the sound so that the louds and the quiets, um, there's not so much of a distinction between those two. So I've got those at minus 35 and minus 30. That seems about right. Let's click apply. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's um, select it all. Click apply. And then hopefully once I've done this, you'll then see there will, will be, it will have removed all of those little, little peaks that uh, are for the background noise. Um, so hopefully that's coming through. Now, if you can hear some violin practice, that's my daughter in the background. Um, <laughs> this is this is uh, the, the, the joys of um, working from home at the moment. So we're nearly ready with that. What this is going to do is it's going to remove all those uh, little sounds. So let's just give it another few seconds. Okay, come on. Two seconds. Okay, so it's removed most of those, um, which is good. Um, but it's still a few more there. So I might I need to do a little bit more tweaking. That might just be, yeah. So I actually probably need to do a little bit more editing there. But that's just to give you an idea of how that works. So once you've once you've edited it, um, you can then go to exporting the audio. Now, I'm not going to export all of this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to export the final section of this. Um, so I can show you how this works. I'm deleting all of those. I'm deleting that first bit. I'm going to move that over here. And then I can go to export, multi-track, mix down, 
uh, entire se section. Um, I'm going to just save that on the desktop uh, like that. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to save that. So there's a test mix down. Hopefully this won't take too long. So, uh, so this is um, now. So I can see a few people here. We've got uh, Will and Dave Show says Garage Band works great too. Absolutely, you could definitely use that. Um, we've also got Michael saying I use Hindenburg Journalist for audio editing. Great, uh, easy tool. Um, but it does cost a bit. Um, so, yeah, keep it simple. <laughs> he says, the violin in the background makes the show sound distinctively British. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, so there we go. We've, we've, we've got that. Uh, now let's go to the test mix down WAV. Load this in here. Okay, so I'm not going to do any, anything more on this, except one thing that you might want to do is go to match loudness. Uh, we might want to just drag that into there. And I've saved this to go to um, minus 12 LUFs. So this is just to keep the audio not too high, um, just at the right level for podcasting. And minus 12 LUFs is uh, the exact thing that we want there. So then we can uh, then just save that. Um, we also might want to just go to um, the metadata bit here So and put in the, the title. So... A confident live test. I'm going to put my uh, name in there. So this information is going to be embedded in the MP3 that we get um, from this. Confident live marketing show. I'm not going to go through all of this. You can add your album art, that kind of thing. Let's just save that. Okay, so hopefully that all helped. Um, <laughs> Doc Rock says, audition is very easy and the processing is world-class. That can be done in Garage Band, but way more work. Yeah, I, I think, so I, I would agree with you. I think now I understand Audition, but I have to admit, to begin with, there was a lot of learning. It was quite, I remember being quite scared about it. Now now that I know what I'm doing, it's great and it's easy to use. So um, yeah, uh, but just if, if this scares you, I just want to say, don't let it scare you. Um, there's, there are easy ways. And of course, you could just hire somebody to edit the, the podcast for you. Um, so, so yeah. So then the next stage is to then upload it. So let's go to my podcasting host. Uh, and I'm just going to share that. So hopefully you can see this. This is Captivate FM. So I've already created a show within Captivate. This is the podcasting host. And this host allows me to... Um, uh, to then create the podcast feed that iTunes, Apple Podcasts, um, all the all the other places can can subs uh, can get people to sus subscribe to, if I can get my words out today. Um, so now let's just upload the audio file that I created. So, oh yeah, it would help if I clicked on that, not upload. Click on that. Uh, let's go to the desktop and let's go to ah. Do you know what I did? I forgot to save it in. Audition. I saved it as a as a WAV. I should have saved it. I'm surprised nobody actually picked me up on this. You need to save it as an MP3. <laughs> oh my goodness, rookie rookie a mistake. How embarrassing. So it's important that you save it as an MP3. Uh, I normally have it just save says, says as that. Let's just save it as an MP3. Okay, let's go back. How embarrassing. Don't do what I just did. Uh, okay, let's, say, let's get it as an MP3 now. Uh, so there we go. Test mix down MP3. Upload that. Okay. And then you can enter your title in here. So I'm not going to do that now, but you enter your title, your subtitle, some show notes, when you want it published to. So say I want it published on Wednesday at 8 a.m. You can do that. Uh, the season number, if you're using seasons, episode number as well whether you're using any explicit language, things like that. And then you can schedule it as well. So that is how you use a podcasting host like uh, Captivate. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Quinn's NC don't forget to save it as an MP3. Yeah, oh my goodness, how embarrassing. Don't do what I do. Um, but yeah, it's an easy mistake to make. So actually showing you that... Um, Will hopefully stop you from doing that. MP3 is the way to go. Cool. Right, we're almost at an end. So uh, let me just um, just get rid of that from from there. So we've we've uploaded to the host. 
then you might want to repurpose it into a blog post. Um, so uh, that is embedding it on the website. So one thing that you could do actually, so let's just go back to um, here. If I go and show my episodes, uh, let's have a quick look here. Let's discard those. Um, yeah, discard, come on. I don't want it anymore. Uh, it's for some reason not allowing me to, let's go back here. And let's go to uh, podcast episodes. Okay, so what I can do here is I can then get, I can embed this website. I can I embed the player on my website. So for example, if I go to uh, 87 here, um, and then you'll be able to see I've, I've created a blog post here. So this is, I had... Uh, uh, Michelle Levitt from Heil Sound on my show. And if I scroll down here, um, I've got the I've got the uh, um, timestamps there, but I've also got the uh, the Captivate a podcast player there as well. And then further down, you can also watch the video. So then repurpose it into a blog post like I've done, uh, if you can, and also um, put the uh, bl the video in there as well. Cool. So that's that. Uh, podcasting directories. Just a quick bit about this because I'm a big fan of podchaser.com. If you haven't heard of Podchaser, it's like the IMDB of the podcasting world. It's absolutely awesome. And you should definitely this. So I've got the my Confident Live Marketing show. You, and, and basically what you can do here is uh, you, could, it, you link your feed with, with Podchaser. And uh, then you can add guests on your shows as well. So um, I can view, for example, all the, the guests that I had on my show. I don't know if it's going to work. It's not working today for some reason, annoyingly. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that, oh, that's a particular episode that I did. But you can uh, add your guests on there and it's just a great way to get your podcast seen by more, more people. So podchaser.com works really, really well. And uh, and then, of course, promotion, promotion side of things. So I'm going to be getting uh, Mark Asquith on the show in a couple of weeks' time to talk about this in more detail. But, um, you know, using social media management tools to post out, uh, use email, uh, and and even use things like Facebook ads and things like that to promote. But we're going to be going into much more detail in a couple of weeks' time about that um, because we've run out of time. I just want to... Um, go through uh, a few more points. Uh, I never met a data I didn't like, so Quinn Zone Studios. I, I, I like to, um, I think attention to detail is important, I, but nowadays I have a podcast editor who adds all of the metadata to the MP3s. You don't have to do it, but if you know, somebody was to download it to your computer, it does have all the copyright information in there and all the information about your show. So if you're, if you, if you care about your, of owning your your content of having ownership of that. I think it's important to put the metadata in, but you don't need to do that. Uh, Doc Rock is being awesome here. And uh, I have to admit, I don't know exactly what uh, LUFS and LKFS means, but uh, loudness units relative to full scale. But um, I was taught how to do this uh, by Mike Russell, who's an amazing guy and uh, who was on the show last week. So yeah, minus 12 LUFS is just the right kind of uh, level for loudness for your podcasts. Um, and I would totally agree with Doc Rock on this one. Uh, Self-editing makes you understand recording better. You will make less mistakes. <laughs> Hopefully, that's the th theory. And that's exactly how I want to do it. I wanted to... I knew that eventually I was going to uh, delegate it to an editor, but I've, I'm so glad that I knew um, how to edit it myself and what and how I need to structure my shows. So if you can learn how to edit yourself, you could use GarageBand, you can keep it really, really simple, but I, I think that's really, really important. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely do that. And Doc, Doc Rock says, I love Podchaser. Um, and uh, Irfan says, I want to, I want to go live. Awesome. Well, Ecom Live is where you need to go for that. Well, we're out of time. We're out of time. Thank you so much uh, for watching this live show. I hope that it's been helpful. Do let me know if you have any more questions, any more thoughts. Um, uh, Michael does ask one final question here. Just says, roughly on average, how long is your entire workflow from start to finish? Um, so... It's, it's pretty quick, actually, uh, So it, but it depends on how many bits you want to do yourself. It's a great question. Um, so I would say the extra work with the editing. So 
it kind of depends on how long your live show is. My live show is about an hour. It's about an hour. So there's about 45 minutes to 50 minutes of podcast editing. That used to take me at the start about two to three hours to edit because I was very slow. Um, but you can speed that up. All the other stuff, once you've got it in place, it just it's really simple. Using Ecamm, you've got it all there. You don't have to mess around with it. Um, the All the bits at the beginning, uh, it, it, all of the extra bits, probably only about an extra hour, if that. Um, so once you've got it all in place, it saves you so, so much time. So that's why I think things like uh, using Calendly and Asana and all these tools make so much difference. And yes, I do think editing your own podcast at the start is good, as Doc Rock was saying. But w for me, it just came to the point when I was just spending too much time editing my podcast. I had other things to do in my business that were more important. So I delegated that. And obviously that costs money, but I think you have to get to a point where um, you, you have to make those kind of decisions. So yeah, time, time works. Uh, time is so, so important. Carlos is saying, muchas gracias. Um, Thank you so much, Carlos. And H. L. H. Le Spencer says, great show. I learned a ton. Thank you so much. Uh, Melissa says, thank you so much too. And thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, uh, Doc Rock, for all of your um, amazing um, contributions to this. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Well, that is the end of today's show. I will be here next week at the usual time. Uh, we go live every Monday. There are loads of other shows, of course, on uh, the Ecamm network. So do check out all the other shows. Uh, you should definitely do that. And um, basically, until next time, I encourage you to launch your podcast with success through the power of Ecamm Live. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching the Podcaster Hour from Ecamm, helping entrepreneurs, business owners, and live streamers launch a podcast with success using the power of Ecamm Live. That's it for this week, but do tune in next time. See you soon, and toodaloo!